Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a feature that's um, in Lightroom 5. It's called the Books feature. But we haven't really talked about it, at least I haven't on my show very much. So I figured I'd give uh, photographers or anyone interested in creating photo books kind of just a quick overview of what the photo book feature is for. Now, I use the photo book feature. As a matter of fact, I'm holding one of my books right here. I like to show my portfolio as a hard printed book. In other words, this is my book, my work. I get to show it uh, for anyone who comes by or comes by the studio or comes by the home. And uh, as you can see, nice, beautiful, big pictures uh, laid out professionally and beautifully printed. And this is my portfolio. However, you can use the books feature for just about any kind of storytelling. In other words, if you wanted, you took a fabulous vacation, you want to put together those pictures in a book, you, um, your, your kids' uh, school year or from the age, for, you know, from one age to another, you want to give those as a gift on their birthdays, whatever it is, you can put together those images and put them in together in a physical book form. Now, with that said, here are some tips. First and foremost, it's easiest and best to start with collections. In other words, I, uh, if I wanted to put a landscapes or travel portfolio book together, then I would um, put all my images together. And here's the lesson I learned, especially on that, on that portfolio book the first time, was put them in the order you want them in in the collection first. It's much easier to move things around in the collection before they're on the actual book pages than it is to do it on the book pages. So I did it the hard way and had to do a lot of work and rearranging on, in the book. Had I just done it here in the first place in the collection, I would have been fine. So for example, if I want uh, this photo to go in front of this photo, I would put that photo first. And that way when it lays it out in the book, it's gonna lay it out in this order. Uh, the next thing, and this is kind of just a caveat for, um, for today's lesson, uh, I don't actually have any of these pictures loaded on this particular user account. So in other words, uh, these are all smart previews. So my book is going to be full of little red exclamation points letting me know you can't print this book because these smart previews aren't high enough resolution to print. You need the original files. So I would need to plug in the, plug in the hard drive where these original files are and then I'd be able to print the book. So that problem, you won't have that problem. I'm just letting you know when you see those red exclamation points when I go to the book module, that's why I have them. Okay, so let's, uh, so you start with a collection. You can, you don't have to have them all in one collection, but you do have to start with a collection at least to get going. And then you can pull images from other collections as I'm going to do here. So I've got the basics of my book down. The next thing I wanna do is go over to the book module and I'm going to clear uh, I'm going to clear this one out it's auto generated it already but I'm going to clear it out and I'm just going to point out some things that we may want to do now the first thing is there is an auto layout feature um, secondly and, and probably even before that you might want to pick what kind of book you want first so you can say a standard landscape book a small square book standard portrait book uh, large landscape, large um, square. Uh, I believe my book that I showed you earlier was the large landscape. Uh, so yes, I want to change the size and go ahead and do it. Hardcover with image wrap. Yep, that's the one I did. Or you can do a hardcover with a dust jacket. If you don't want a hardcover, then go back down to one of the other standard books. Yes, I know, you don't have to show me that every time. And uh, you can do a soft cover. Soft cover books are nice too, especially when I do my travel books. I'm usually doing them as soft cover books. They don't need to be hard cover. But whatever you choose, uh, let's go back to the one I like. And let's go to the hard cover with image wrap. Yep. Whichever one you choose, it will give you the price estimate based on just to get started. So that book's going to cost me 60 bucks just to get going. And again, you can uh, see it in different country um, uh, currencies, and away we go. Now, if you put the logo, the blurb logo, on the last page of the book, then your price goes down. If you say, no, 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 this is for a client, I can't have any you know, logos that the client, need, you know, I don't want them to see, you can turn off the logo, but the price of the book's going to go up. So in other words, they pay you a little, or give you a discount if you let them advertise on your book. 
which my books um, aren't going to clients, so they're fine. Meaning clients may look at them, but they aren't being delivered as I'm, in other words, I'm not selling them the book. All right, now, um, next up is the auto layout. So I can have it just do one picture per page, but since I know I'm going to grab photos from other collections, I'm gonna say the left page is blank and uh, the right one is for a photo. So now I'm gonna go ahead and say auto layout the book. And that means it's just gonna put one big photo on each page and leave the other page blank. All right, so now it's done that. And again, I could change the cover. Uh, here, let's do a different cover. Uh, let's see. I like this kind of cover where it's going to be full of uh, thumbnails, but you can choose whatever color you, cover you want. Your cover could be uh, an image, it could be text, it could be just um, whatever you choose. All right, so that's your cover. Design it any way you want, but now I want to get into the individual pages. So page one, right page blank, page two, uh, photo, left page blank, and here's where I can get in and I can say I don't have to have it blank. I can say that I want four photos on this page like so. Now we've used all the photos in my landscape collection. That's how, that's what generated the book in the first place. So now I can go to my different collection, my travel collection, and I can start to fill in some of those other blanks. So I can say, yep, that photo goes there. That photo goes there. This photo goes here. You get the idea. So you can drag them in any way you want. Go to this page and design this one uh, to be differently. Different. So I can say, for example, this one's only going to have two photos like so and maybe that one's going to be uh, that photo and uh, there's one more here we'll do big ben that photo so these of course don't necessarily go with each other but you get the idea it's just an idea of how we can lay this out um, now if you wanted to explain something in your book for example let's say on this one i wanted to tell a story then what i might do is i might say you know what instead of it just being one photo why don't we make it one photo uh, with a bleed with text underneath and that way I can get in and I can type whatever I want to print here and also once I have a page with type then I can scroll down and I can get into the uh, type presets fonts so forth and so on so you can really customize your book uh, just the way you want and put things on it just the way you want and you can of course change the layout so let's jump back to the thumbnails here and uh, let's say that we want to go to this page and we want to lay it out a little bit different. We'll say multiple photos. So this one's got a lot of photos on it. And we'll say that we're going to use that layout. And again, I can just drag and drop and it will figure it out. I can, let's say that one's cut off. Let's go to that page. Well, I don't want it to show like that. I can just move them in the, uh, in the area where they belong. So same thing here, drag and drop. I don't want that cut off and of course these would be more for portraits and I'm showing landscapes but you get the idea let's put that one in uh, we'll put this one back in and we'll put that one back in okay so you would continue to lay out your book as I'm doing here and then once you're done you could say send the book to blurb to be printed and of course it gave you the price estimate at the top but what if you want to print your own? What if you want to send it to another a lab to be printed? What if you want, you have your own custom printing you want to get done, you want to print it in-house? Then what you can do is up here where it says book, instead of sending it to the built-in provider, which is Blurb, and they do a great job, but instead of sending it there, I can say generate a PDF or generate a JPEG. So I can use this to build books that I never have printed with Blurb. I can make PDFs or JPEGs, JPEG was the feature that was added with, for sending it to other print labs besides Blurb. But PDF is great because I can make a PDF and send it to anyone. Anyone that I want to send my or put it on my website and share my electronic travel, hey, download my book and look through my pictures kind of thing. So you get the idea. Um, the book feature is very cool. You've got text. You've got images. You've got custom design you can do you can uh, go through the settings and pretty much control the look of the pages just the way you want i love the book feature and i use it as my portfolio book so with that hope you learned something and we'll catch you on the next one thanks for watching